here we are in the QBO gym, and this is where we have numerous hands-on exercises that simulate real-life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Each month covers a variety of new topics and scenarios, and to make it a little bit easier for you, we break it down into four different sections. So if you are looking to work on your bookkeeping skills, this is the place for you. And if you want to do an entire month's worth of these all on your own, be sure to join our free five-day bookkeeping challenge. All you need to do is click on the link in the description. But let's get into today's exercise, which is being pulled from our September year one strength training section where we really focus on prepayments. At the top here is an animated video to give you an understanding of what you, the bookkeeper, will be doing for your client, Craig, this month. Below that is an interactive pre-assessment quiz that relates to the video up above. Under that are all of the exercises in this section. And at the bottom here is an optional area where after you have gone through all of the exercises in this section, you will unlock some sample marketing posts that you can use on your LinkedIn to share with everyone what you have learned so far. So let's dive into today's exercise where we are going to practice receiving payments from customers. Go ahead and click on that link to have the exercise pull up for you. I have it here on the right side of my screen, so let's read through the scenario. Craig landed his first snow removal client, Cool Cars. Craig will be clearing their, park their customer parking lot and the sidewalks at the dealership. Craig needs to spend a lot of cash up front on casual labor, ice melt, and rock salt, so he wants to require a prepayment from all snow removal customers. Craig decides to collect an upfront deposit of $1,000 from Cool Cars and asks you to bill against it as the services are delivered. There are two ways to handle this situation. So you will need to be in the sample company to do this exercise. If you are not sure how to get into the sample company or get your own free QBOA account, be sure to click on the link in the description. I have the sample company pulled up here on the left side of my screen. This is the dashboard and what it will look like when you have signed in. So let's go ahead and get started with this exercise. The receive payment method is best used when the job is not going to carry over from one accounting period to the next and there's no outside reporting. Unfortunately, with snow removal, there's usually snow removed in December and then in the following year in January. So this, in this scenario, the unearned deposit method is better. However, a lot of smaller companies like Craig's use the receive payment method, so take a look at that first. Note that in order to use the receive payment method, automatically apply credits must be turned on in account and settings. It's usually already turned on in the sample company. For the unearned income method, you'll need to turn it off. So uh, you'll need to turn it off. So you'll see where that setting uh, resides in the next exercise. So let's go ahead and um, click on the plus new button and then click on receive payment. Now the plus new button is on the top left corner of the screen. Click on that and then under customers is receive payment. Now once it comes up, we are going to fill it out. In the customer field, we're going to select cool cars. So click the down arrow and it is the third one that is listed here on this list. Go ahead and click on that. And as soon as you do, you're going to get this warning from QBO that there's no open invoice um, on the cool cars account. It's a prepayment. So of course there's not an invoice there. Um, so we're going to ignore the warning and just click on the X that's right up here to the right. So in the payment method field, we're going to select check. So click that down arrow, go ahead and select check. And then in the deposit to field, we're going to select checking. So click the down arrow and checking is the first one on that list. If we knew what the uh, check number is, we would go ahead and put that here, um, but we don't have it for the exercise. So we're just gonna leave it blank. In the amount field or amount received field, excuse me, we're going to type 1000. So click into that, go ahead and type 1000. And then if you click out of it, you will see it is updated here. We are just gonna go ahead and click on save and close. That's the green button on the bottom right corner. Click on that. And you'll notice that as soon as you do, you're gonna get another warning from QBO that you'll be saving this money as a credit, which is fine. That's what we want it to do for right now. So let's go ahead and click on that green save as a credit button. 
and now it is showing as saved. Watch what happens when Craig completes the first snow removal and you send the invoice to Cool Cars. So let's say that we're gonna send this um, invoice, some services have happened, so we're gonna click on the plus new button and then click on invoice. So again, that plus new button on the top left corner, click on that, under customers, select invoice. And when this comes up, we're going to fill it out. In the customer field, we're going to select cool cars. So that is on the top left corner. Click the down arrow. It's the third one listed. Go ahead and click on it. And as soon as you do, all of the information will appear for you. Um, we're going to leave all of this as is and continue with filling out the rest of the invoice. So in the product service field, we're going to select maintenance and repair. So click into that field right there, and I'm going to go ahead and start typing rather than scrolling to find it and have it come up for me. Once you find it, go ahead and click on it. Let's update that description field to make it a little bit more clear what this is for. So in that field, we're going to delete what's currently there and type instead snow removal. So click into that, delete what is there, type snow removal. And then in the amount field, we're going to say that they render or they used $200 worth of services. So in that amount field right here, go ahead and click into it, type 200. When you hit the tab key over, you will see that it has been updated here by QBO. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on the save and close button, which is on the bottom right corner here. And that invoice has now been saved. Now, QBO automatically applies a credit from the $1,000 deposit to, sh uh, to, excuse me, to pay the snow removal invoice. So let's check uh, to see how this looks on the Cool Cars account. To get to their customer profile from the left navigation bar, we're going to hover over customers and leads and then select customers. So the left navigation bar is this on the left hand side. Halfway down is customers and leads. Go ahead and click on that or I'm sorry, click. you could click on it or you can hover over it like the exercise says, hover over it and then click on customers. It took me to the exact same page either way. All right, so let's go ahead and find cool cars and go ahead and click on their profile so that we can have it appear for us. And here we will see their information and then all of their transactions. And let's take a closer look at it. The great thing about the receive payment method is that when a customer is invoiced, the invoice is automatically paid. You don't need to remember to apply the payment and the customer won't receive reminders about an invoice they've already paid up front. The problem with this method is that the customer's negative balance will show up in the accounts receivable section of the balance sheet. Since there is no corresponding invoice to include in the balance, this makes it look like the business has less money coming in than it actually does. With one customer or a small amount of money that will be used quickly, this isn't a huge deal, especially if Craig is the only one looking at the financials. Also, if Cool Car's deposit was not used up by year end, journal entries would be required to move the balance to an unearned income account on the last day of the year and then on the first day of the following year. Another journal entry would be required so that the balance was again reflected in accounts receivable. So you'd have to do a bunch of journal entries basically. In the next exercise, we're going to learn about the generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP um, compliant method for accepting cool cars uh, prepayment. So if we go in here, just to, to talk a little bit more about this, it looks like there's a negative um, open balance here. Here is that payment, that received payment of $1,000, and then that invoice that we just created for $200. If we look at this received payment, it is still showing an $800 credit. So we know how much um, they still have um, from their prepayment that can be used for future, um, for future uh, jobs. So that is how you would apply those prepayments. Now, if you like this exercise and you'd like to do more like it, be sure to join our free five-day bookkeeping challenge. All you need to do is click on the link in the description. We're gonna continue on in the strength training section with our next exercise, where we practice receiving unearned income from customers. And I will see you in the next video.